And I remember the first time just going out of my neighborhood, I was like, all right, maybe it's just a normal, you know, somebody just happens to be going the same way I'm going. These cars would follow me like on the back. They would tailgate me. I would get followed from my house to the gym, followed from here to Home Depot, everywhere I would go. I remember the day I got raided, it was uh, 2017 in December, waking up in the morning and just hearing large slams on my door and, you know, just saying FBI search warrant. And I was like, what the hell? Like, I was like really surprised. Is this really happening? Because I never expected this to happen at all in my life. And I go downstairs and I open the door and I just see like 25 or so FBI agents with like fully equipped rifles, everything, just pointing it at us. They brought my mom down and there was someone else staying here. We were all handcuffed in front of the house. And I remember hearing like drawers just getting banged and doors getting you know, smashed. Yeah, so actually, every time I would get followed, it would be right across the road right here. Um, I'd always see about two to three cars wait, right across right there. And as soon as wherever I turned, they would just come after me. I believe it was like a few days before my wedding to my current wife. That's when I first found out I couldn't fly because I, I had gotten raided and then like literally, I think it was the next day or two, I went to the airport. I couldn't print out my boarding pass and I literally had to just go to the rental car area. I had to drive to my wedding all the way from California to the East Coast. It just happened at the worst time. My uh, mother actually had uh, introduced me to her. It was like a, uh, you know, a Bollywood love film, and we were really into each other. It was when the Syrian conflict had just started, so there was a lot of aid organizations at that time, like going from UK to Syria. So I, I was quite interested in getting involved in helping uh, whatever way I could. So she introduced me to her friends, and they had asked me about what charities that I know of. So at that point, I did get their numbers and start communicating with them. I've always liked to help people. The Syrian conflict just caught my eye in the sense that I saw a huge humanitarian crisis, but nobody really doing anything about it. During this time, also in the UK, there was other people um, that might have had other interests in the Syrian conflict, and I did kind of get intertwined with, with those same people. It would just be like one-off times. I'd go hang out with my ex at her college, and you know we'd run into one of her friends or something like that. After I had left the UK, my, my ex's friend had come under investigation. She had gotten raided by the British authorities. And at that point, I was also on her phone when they had taken her stuff. I was able to see, you know, firsthand the suffering of the people and, you know, just take part in little things. We just did food handouts and visited orphans and visited sick people in tents. To me, it was an eye-opener um, and made me just feel grateful of my own life. A lot of well-known Islamic speakers actually go to that area too, and they don't have any issues. Everyone's living fine. It seems like me coming out of there, I've become like this big, you know, this big target for the U.S. government. Hi, babe. <sighs> you know, my situation is so weird. It's like, I don't, I'm, where do I go for help? Like, you know, I don't have this country, I don't have that country. So where is my, you know, where is my home? You know, is it, is it America or is it, you know, outer space? Do you need any help? No, it's almost done. Our favorite staple, spaghetti. Say, where's my food? He's <laughs> like, um, mom, can you help? Mama? Say, mama? Can you see mama? Please? Mama? 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 Mama?
I remember the day of the flight um, to Pakistan. I was a bit nervous because this was the first time I had flown um, getting off the no-fly list. I didn't expect things to be smooth. I still got the Quad S, um, extra pat-down, extra screening, TSA before the, uh, before, before the flight. But I was happy. I was like, all right, at least I can fly. I remember getting off the flight from Pakistan and um, getting off the boarding gate. This was the first time I remember things were looking good. I mean, there was nobody waiting for me off the, off the flight. I go to customs, show my visa, they stamp it, I go through. And after I walk out the customs area, I'm going to the baggage claim and this large guy comes up to me and he, he just basically says my name and says, come with me. You know, there's no option, I had to go with him. At that point, it clicked in my head that this is some kind of intelligence official. I remember telling him, you know, I don't know what you want, but I've just been removed from the no-fly list, so here's my letter. Like, I'm basically shoved into this truck and I'm sat in between two, two, or th two other people they put a bag over my head, they handcuffed me, and we're just driving, and I couldn't see where I was going. I was just thinking like, I'm not going to come out of this alive. I'm never gonna return back to my family. He started to ask me, you know, what connections do I have to Syria? What connections do I have to foreign terror organizations? And he said that, you know, we know everything about you, just tell us what we want, and you know, we're gonna make it easy for you. I was in this room with a bag over my head for a good two days. And I had my feet um, handcuffed and my hands handcuffed at this point. During the, that time period, I was interrogated by the same people that had abducted me from the airport and a few other uh, officials from the ISI. They were asking me about Syria and foreign terror organizations, but then they started to actually divert from that and start to say, why is the US government doing this to you? I remember the official exactly, like the exact words he told me, why are you on a CIA hit list? So at that point, I explained to them, you know, my, basically my entire story that what started in the U.S. And that was good enough for them and they released me. Right. So, you know, this is the big threat right here, <laughs> eight months old. Uh, this is his, this is the big scary baby. I think it was the one that yeah. So this is his, his boarding pass. So you can see right here, infant quad S. So quad S basically means secondary screening. That means you're subject to extra screening, pat down, pretty much everything I, me and my wife go through. Um, and that's for an eight month old infant. One hour at the beginning is not enough. So they gotta do it again before boarding. Isn't this amazing? Good morning, California. I wonder how much money the federal government has. 